632 happening today. More than two dozen schools in Western New York welcoming students back to the classroom, some for the first time since March of 2020. So crazy to think about when you put that in perspective. Oh, this is now the third school year to be impacted by COVID-19, but it still won't look like any school year before. What we didn't have last spring was a COVID-19 vaccine that is now available for kids 12 and older. As they return to school, kids can expect social distancing in classrooms and to having to keep their mask on at all times. But while kids have to deal with those, they also have a lot of catching up to do. After learning remotely, a lot of those kids tended to struggle. In a survey by Horace man earlier this year, nearly all more than 97% of educators nationwide reported seeing at least some learning loss in their students over the past year when compared to those students in previous years. 55% wow. estimate their students are behind by more than three months. Wow. So all new for you. Thousands of Western New York children are returning to full five day a week in person learning. And while studies have shown the pandemic negatively affected academic growth, school leaders say holding children back to repeat a school year known as retention is not the answer. Are we going to see, you know, more students being held back their year or will they be able to move forward? Retention is not the solution for um students who have struggled over the past year and a half. You move the student forward and then you increase the support around them. You give them additional reading support, additional math support, social emotional support, and then keep measuring and see if you're closing that gap. But we're acknowledging, I think, across the board as superintendents, that retention isn't the way to go, but where do the other parts of school fall into place? It's really past time to have those conversations. That student who's struggling now in third or fourth grade, you know, you got to picture them. They're going to be 17 years old in a ninth grade classroom surrounded by a bunch of 14 and 15 year olds. They're like, they're probably going to drop out. We have very few retentions, very few. We've had a few parents request it. It would be less than a dozen. Some of our teachers and I have had that discussion and they've said, you know, I'm not as far behind where I would have been as you would think. Districts are not required to provide all remote learning for students who want to stay at home. The superintendents from the city of Niagara Falls, Star Point and Springville Griffith tell me it is only for those who are immune compromised or considered medically fragile. The leaders say it is not sustainable for districts to continue to run two parallel programs programs for in-person and remote learning. Eileen Buckley, 7 Eyewitness News. Eileen, thank you. Now, if you missed out on any part of Eileen's discussion with our local school superintendents, you can still watch it all in full tonight at 8 on our 7 Plus streaming app. And she touches on a number of topics there. So if you're interested, make sure you tune in for